Alright, so I'm going to try and do this one again because I did record this already uh, yesterday, but it turns out the screen recorder which I was using um, decided not to work after I was all done with it. So, we move on. And like I said here, um, hopefully I picked up at the right spot, but uh, we are going to cut away at the surface just a minute about uh, bit so I won't change it. And I tried using 0 .00001. It's too thin. I have to actually use a um, smaller, uh, or sorry, uh, yes, a bigger chunk to cut out, but still, 0 .001 is just fine. And like I'll show you here, once I cut away from it, you barely tell the difference. There's basically anything. It just gives you that nice clean line there. Now I already colored the screen black, and all I did right there was just click on the the surface which we had just made a, um, a cut out of give us that line and up to materials at the top material or I just went over here to the color and I just pick glossy black and that is what makes it black there now um, that is a paint I like to call it not an actual material so it didn't actually change the properties of it just changed the colors of it so we could physically see it but it actually doesn't really do anything Next thing we're going to be doing on this uh, phone is we're going to be doing the holes at the very top and bottom of the phone. It's kind of uh, for that boom stereo kind of thing going on here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is first make our first hole on the phone. So I'll bring up this. You go into the sketch at the top of the phone or the bottom of the phone. Either one works. Grab your circle tool. Go ahead and uh, zoom right in there. And make yourself a circle. I'm just going to go ahead and hit D, that's going to throw me right into the dimension tool. You see that appears around my screen. Go ahead and dimension from the bottom here. I roughly guesstimated, uh, I think it was like point zero 0.09, I'll try that out, yeah. And then from this side to this side, I think we came to the conclusion that it was roughly 0.4. And then the actual hole itself was 0 0.01. And there's our hole. Now, um, I could go ahead and uh, make a rectangular pattern and make this across the whole entire thing. So it would have circles going across the whole phone. Downside to that is that if I were to do that, with so many little uh, sketches, after I'm done making the sketch of all those circles across that top hand part, what would happen is that I would have to go with the cut tool and click on every single hole which isn't really the best way of doing this so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this and I'll show you is that you can do a rectangular pattern on a feature and not just a sketch and that's what we call these, we call these features when it's in the 3D so I make the extrusion or cut or that that uh, chamfer around the whole edge, since I wasn't using a sketch to cut away at it, it's called a feature. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at the point one, the cut all the way through there. Go ahead and leave that there. That makes our hole. Now, we want to then go ahead and make that hole appear a bunch of times across here, making the speaker up on, on the phone. So what we'll do, see if I get this in the right little area here, so I'll go ahead and inside our 3D modeling, not our sketch, but our 3D modeling uh, ribbon here. Go ahead and hit the rectangular pattern. The feature we're going to pick from the tree. I could go ahead down here and click on the circle just like that. That would work. But I'm going to click on the tree because that is more efficient. And I know exactly what I'm clicking on because I know that's the last thing I did. Second thing is we're going to have to tell it what direction we're going to want to go. So we're going to have to go ahead and click on the arrow here. Pick our direction, which should be a line of any sort in the direction you want to go. Now it's pointing in the direction I want it to go. Um, it says that it's only doing two occurrences. I think it's going to be more along the line of 70. It's going to give me this little box saying, hey, you did a large number. You really want that. I say, okay, yes, I want it, a large number. Um, for the distance in between, I'm going to put down 0 0.02. That gives us just enough spacing in between them. And let's go ahead and let's put 80 in there and see what that looks like, yeah. 
80 looks a little bit better. So we're going to leave the 80 in there. Now we have one direction. It's going across the phone in this fashion. Now what we want to do is actually um, go ahead and have it go up to making a matrix or a uh, of uh, holes across here, not just a regular vector. Um, so we're going to have it go in two directions. So now we're going to go up. Now say if I clicked on that line and it was facing in this direction. Well this right here is your flip flop so now I can point it down but in this case we want to point it up. So same thing we're going to go ahead and make our spacing to 0 0.02. Uh, occurrences I believe there's five on here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now as you can see um, it doesn't show all the ones in between. You'll realize that once I hit OK it will actually make it. And there you are. There's all your holes. Nice and small. Looks pretty cool. And it's starting to come together right now. It's starting to see the phone come together. Alright. Now I can go ahead and do that same routine. Sketch, hole, pattern. But I'm lazy and I don't want to have to go through all that. So what we're going to do is a rectangular pattern, a rectangular pattern. So go ahead and get your rectangular pattern. Same thing we did last time. The feature we're going to be doing is that last rectangular pattern we already did. It highlights the uh, extrusion 5 and the rectangular pattern because they're both linked together. So it's going to carry on both of those features. We're going to tell it we only need it in one direction. And we're going to need it in the vertical direction. See it facing in the opposite direction. So we want to face it in the this direction, point it downward. Currents is two, and that's what we want. We only want two times because it counts the first one too, not just the um, the one that's pointing out there. The spacing, I think it's roughly 4.9. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there and hit OK. And now it should go ahead and regenerate one down there too. So now you got both your speakers. And we're looking pretty good right now. Um, for our next tool we're going to use is um, actually the camera on the back of the phone here. Now as you can see it looks kind of flat like this. And the natural thing of trying to make that cut out the hole in the back of the phone um, or you know that where that glass should be is just go ahead put a sketch on there and then go ahead and put um, you know and cut cut into the phone just a little bit just like we did with the front the, uh, front of the phone the downside to that is that we if you don't remember if you look at it from different direction we have a natural arc so if you went to go ahead and went down on there with a straight line it would only cut out maybe the top of it or maybe it'll cut out more of the center of it and then just a little bit of the sides we want it to be perfectly even across it the whole entire thing we want that natural arc to be in there right where this camera is here see how it's a little bit rounded so it would kind of like make itself smaller in there if we made it flat so we have to figure out a way to make it so it rounds to the outside without going too deep in one area and thinner in the other this feature is called embossing so the first thing we do we have to actually make a sketch to which um, we can write on that's outside of it so we're embossing it's like we're kind of taking an image and we're kind of wrapping it around the object um, so we have to make it above the object and then wrap it to it so in order to do that we have to make a sketch that doesn't actually appear here it's not like I can click on the back side and do anything so what we're going to be using is a sketch to which will float away from here and the best way to do this is find yourself a flat surface you click create sketch first so now it's activated you can see my little thing right there it's got the little sketch tool you're going to click on it click and hold and then drag away in the direction you want it now I'm going to let go now you can see it tells me a distance this is very useful if you want a specific distance away from your target or where you're trying to draw in my case it's not a big deal I don't have to worry about that I'm just going to go ahead and just leave it where it is because when you're embossing it's not a big deal now because I dragged it from the front face and went to the back it's now put me in the opposite side I'm looking at the side I don't want to look at so I was going to go ahead and click over here rotate it around now I'm going to be looking at the back side of the phone alright 
Now we kind of want to figure out, well, where is this exactly on here? I'm going to go ahead and get my handy dandy uh, little ruler here because uh, I've left my digital caliper back in my office here, but we'll go ahead and use this here. I'm going to roughly say it's about four centimeters from the top. And then from one of the corners, just one of them, you're looking at uh, about four, 4.75, four and three quarters. And as you can see, we don't have any geometry on here. So like I said, since it's not on that plane, we have to project it. We have to get it. We have to kind of steal it. So we're going to go ahead and go down here. And I'm only going to need this line down up here on the very side of the phone. I'm only going to need the, the line at the very top of it. Okay, so that gives me enough geometry to figure out where the, I want this hole to be. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my circle tool. Put a circle here. I'm going to go ahead and dimension it. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here. And we said 4 centimeters from here. So I can go ahead and I'll show you tricks before. Now I'm going to go hit CM right, at, right after it. Now, even though this, this whole entire part is inside um, inches, once I put CM in there, it will automatically convert it to inches for you. So I go ahead and hit the enter, and it will automatically go into 1.575. That just makes your life a whole lot easier. Even though you're uh, working in centimeters, it will automatically do that approximation for you. And once again, we said this was roughly about what? Was it four centimeters or what was I? Four centimeters. Four point. So what I'm gonna do here because I'm I'm not trusting this really here. Honestly, I think I was using a. I'm not liking that the accuracy I'm getting on this actually tell you the truth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of guesstimate this, and I'm going to go ahead and um, teach you another trick here, and I'm going to do this by doing another projecting another geometry. Project that line. Now I want it in the center, so I'm going to go ahead and go here and click on this line and click on this line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up here and look, it gives me 2.70. We already confirmed that that was what we wanted prior to this but I'm gonna go ahead and click it and now it's gonna give me a warning and tell me hey listen I can't change this this isn't stuff I can change it's been predefined by previous tree objects but I'm gonna go ahead and say accept anyway and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on it click on it again and look it it grays out the number but it says D49 now what it's saying that if I type in D49 into any of these other dimensions it will then give me that dimension so I can go in here and go and highlight this and go D49. Now I can divide that by 2 because that would be the center. Now hit enter. Now it's perfectly aligned in the center using a simple math equation and a predefined uh, measure at the top it will give me that and fx is saying it's a function of a different dimension. And this it, to me it looks a little bit it should be a little bit higher so I'm going to go 3.5. Oh. I forgot to put my centimeters in there. 3.5 cm and that looks a little bit more what I should be looking at and let's say that uh, let's say 3 8 inch no that's way too small 0.5 in 0.5 looks good so now we have what we're looking for. We have it fully defined as a circle. Um, I'm going to want to make this a little bit more um, done up here. Because um, if you can see, we got the whole lines going in the back here. I'm going to all do in one thing. So um, we're running out of time on this video. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. And we'll pick right back up. And we'll finish off this whole embossing task on the back.